so that's really annoying and um, <laughs> uh, it's uh, especially annoying um, let's see if I gotta get this fixed um, got my back I apologize I've had trouble with open broadcaster since the day I know a lot of people use it and they they haven't had any trouble but I get these black screens you know periodically and that means that the audio and my cursor is still being recorded but the the video is not or the screen is not being recorded so um, I apologize for interruptions but uh, where I was was getting ready to I had just deleted uh, the sort of schematic carport that had been done and I'm gonna build myself a new uh, truss here a timber frame truss and I know I'm gonna have a, a cord a bottom cord and so I also know that the roof pitch is 10 12 so I'll come over here 10 or 12 inches and I'll go up 10 inches and I'll draw myself a line and that will give me uh, a way to nip off that there and I'll do the same here On a truss, your bottom cord basically extends uh, to the house line, which is the dimension of your project. And then I would have another, then I would have the top cord, which I'm hoping is going to offset properly. Let's just make it's going to be 7.5 also. I'm, I'm going this way because um, I'm not confident that I'm offsetting in, in the plane. So I'm going to make this uh, 15 now. Now I just made sure my... Um, I feel like I need to make this these rafter portions their own. Uh, Why am I not on that? Let me find the center of this and I will go up here and see if I can get myself. Why is that not intersecting? Something is funky about this. Now what's going on here is that this I've got my axis all weird and sometimes when you offset a line, a construction line, it doesn't always go in the plane and I have learned to recognize when it's not working. So what I'm going to do for now is I'm just going to extend this up to here. Now you see how when I intersect with that, I get a little X. I'm getting a point now, but I'm just going to do this the old fashioned way, I guess. <coughs> I don't know why it's wanting to offset in a weird dimension. 7.5 just off odd odd now that should be should get my yeah there we go I'm just going to run this down here for now and get my uh, overhang which is I'm going to make this um, 16 
and I can bring this edge down to where it's even with well I was gonna try that but it doesn't like it uh. Now I'm going to take out this middle part that I was using as a reference. There we go. And all we got to do now is get this in a view that we can use our push pull tool and make that three and a half inches thick. Like that. Let's check our live feed. Saw your video about Trump and Hillary. You still believe in the two-party system? Well, I sure I do. I believe I have perfect faith in our political system. I love it. I love our Constitution. I love our political system. No, no doubts at all that we have the best political system in the world. And I said the same thing when Barack Obama won. <laughs> So now, now we got to decide is do we want like a king post in the middle or you know how we want this truss uh, to look. And sometimes what I'll do is I'll just go online and I'll just do like timber frame trusses just to get some ideas even though I've built a bunch of these. He wants to keep it simple, so what I'll do, here's a here's a picture. You can see that typically you'd have like a king post and then these webs. Now, here's another good example, like right here. These wouldn't be curved unless you want, here's one that's not curved. And this would just be basic. You see, these are mainly decorative trusses because the members by, in timber framing, the members are sized such that um, you don't need a lot of webbing because this 4x8 will make the span by itself. But you're basically just building a truss. I mean, it's not 100%. It's, it is structural per se, but you wouldn't. You really don't need like what you would need in a like if you were building regular trusses with two by fours. You know, you don't need all the webbing that you would need. So. I'm going to go ahead and go down the path I was going to start out on and let's work what software I'm using um, SketchUp Pro and I was uh, they have a free version um, now this um, I think I'm going to go ahead and make this an 8 inch 2 or it would be three and three quarters, 3.75. I'm just gonna go ahead and make these webs the same, 3.75. I'm gonna make them the same dimension as, and then I'm gonna delete this for now. Well, typically when you are doing a truss, this this web would go up at a 45 degree angle or it or it could be um, perpendicular to this but uh, for now I'm just going to leave it and some of this to a certain extent is a schematic in other words when he goes to have his trusses built he's going to say hey I want it to look like this and then the trusses oops See, sometimes my lines don't offset, they don't offset right because I'm at a weird, my axis has gotten off, kind of weird. Like that. And I can delete my, uh, and I'll have one on this side too. Three 
That's basically 7.25 is the the width of a dressed. Uh, when I say dressed, if you're going to buy a rough saw number for these dresses, then it's a little different picture. You may have something that's actually eight inches wide or even eight and a half, eight and a quarter. And that's the thing about when you're buying um, lumber that's not dressed, you don't really know what you're getting. Um, oops. I forgot I gotta get this in a view where I can see sideways here. Use my control key to copy that face and then I'll have to what in the world. Well I see what it's doing. It's It's, I don't know why. This is one thing I don't ever understand about SketchUp sometimes is that like I push the control key down to copy that. Like I should have drawn this whole face and then push pulled it all at once, but I was not patient. But it changes the colors of the faces. And I have to change them back. You just reverse it. And it's kind of annoying sometimes because if I had just drawn it you know, all at one time and then push pulled, it would have been fine. But you can see now we got ourselves a cool timber truss. And what I'll do is um, I'll save this as a component. Then, if for some reason he doesn't like it, and um, I have to change it. All of the trusses will change. And so I know this is about 24 feet, so I'm gonna put these on three foot centers uh, because I know my tongue and groove decking will, will span that and then times eight to give me enough. And he may, uh, what we'll do is we'll, we'll, what I should have done was measure the width of my beam. Let me check my, check my live stream in case I get another black screen. But let's see, if I measured this Twenty-two six. My phone's being used. What's twenty-two six divided by seven? That would be three and one foot six. That would be three point five. Let's see, three foot five. I tell you what. Here's a cool trick. If you just draw yourself a line, um, like if I went from the center. Let's see here, oh, the easiest way to do this. I'm just gonna draw myself a line right there. And then I'm going to, let's see, but we need to do this centered. So I need to bring this back 1.75 on each end. And do that. I'm just going to put myself a little tick mark here and then delete that. Oops, I said I was. I should have deleted that, that in first. <laughs> and then I'll do the same thing over here. And if you got really odd, odd dimensions that are, you know, that aren't easy to figure out on your spacing. This is a neat little trick you can do with a SketchUp. So now you just grab the line that you drew, well, and then you right mouse click and say divide, and then you can move your cursor until you get the spacing you like. And it'll, if you stay there for a second, it'll say five segments at four feet five. I think I'm gonna go to three feet eight. 
three feet eight. What would I, if I went one more, what would that be? Let's do three feet two. That's better. So now all I have to do is grab my truss and go from here, hold my control key down, and go to that first one times eight. What, I forgot. And I'll copy them over. Well, that didn't work. Why is that? Did I pick the wrong point? I should be able to copy that. Go from there to there. Times seven. There we go. Yeah, I must have selected the wrong, I selected the wrong point, so I got rid of one of the line segments so I could see where the line was, where the line ended. And then you can just delete, delete your little lines. But that, that's a neat little trick to get all your trusses or whatever it is. And then that still seems like a lot of them to me. But the main thing uh, is that uh, you you need to think about your decking on your whatever decking you're going to use and that will determine the spacing uh, obviously your roof loading but roof loading is rather light unless you're, you know, we're looking at probably 20 pounds per square foot in Texas. So we don't really have to worry about the decking, the roof load per se, as much as the span. Like I wouldn't want to put these uh, trusses on five foot centers, knowing that my roof, my tongue and groove uh, roof decking wouldn't span that far. So, but I think maybe this may be a little too close together. Probably should have done if I go back to that point where my line was just one line, let's see. Yeah, and I select that next divide. And see, this is what's kind of cool. You can just kind of experiment. I think the three foot eight is gonna work okay. And I'll just get rid of that one. I'll copy this here got myself to where I can't see the end of the line there times seven yeah well I got one more trust that I need now but that's easy I can just delete it make sure we're flush there yep cool well, I like that spacing a little better it's not so crowded and I'm pretty sure that uh, my roof decking will be fine because I'm going to suggest a uh, two by six tongue and groove because on um, with that tongue and groove with the two by six tongue and groove which I'll go ahead and draw um, um, what's that uh, let's make it uh, five it's going to be five I think it's five inches uh, finished in other words with the tongue and groove uh, it would be five by right now we're just going to make it like 36 long and then I'll make it it's an inch and a half thick and I'm not going to draw the tongue and groove because uh, you're not going to see that so now I can make this a group itself so that it doesn't interfere with anything else and I can make it hang over 16 and I'll pull it all the way to the other end and then I'll hang it over 16 inches that way and let's guess how many it's going to take well, we can just roughly measure it. 
16 feet, 192, what's that? Uh, 3, 6, uh, 6. Let's just copy up a bunch of them. We can only delete it. So we don't have to do higher math. Yeah, I just did 40 rows. <laughs> just for the Yeah, I was close. Almost did higher math in my head. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make this. Well, since this is not a component and just a group, I can just edit this one and we'll just say we ripped it down to make the last row. Well, as a matter of fact, well, you don't need a ridge event either. I was going to say if you needed a ridge event, you just take that course off. And leave the gap up there but this is going to be open so we don't need it vented now what I need to do is make that whole thing a group by itself and I need to get to where I can grab all those without grabbing anything else there we go make that a group now oh, that's a neat trick I can copy this over and I can mirror it. I could have spun it around, but sometimes it's more fun to mirror. I like mirroring it. Minus one and then bring it back to where that bottom edge meets that that bottom edge. And you have yourself two sides of the roof. Made out of tiny groove. Just like that. Now see it wasn't that hard to draw, but now I have drawn all the components so far, and I know exactly how they're made. And that that proportion of webbing looks better than what this uh, instant roof. I mean, it's kind of cool. I'll just give you a demonstration right quick. Uh, am I still broadcasting? <laughs> If I were to draw myself a just a, a roof plane down here, it doesn't matter as long as it's flat. And then um, you just make yourself a group out of that. And then you select the face and the two ends of the gable like that. Then this is this. It's called instant roof. I have a bunch of these little things. I hardly ever use them, <laughs> but I, I use them just for quick and dirty stuff like this. Um, if somebody wants to see an example of a roof and I don't want to have to draw the whole thing, but then I always go back and detail it in, you know, myself later. I'll say, um, make roof and let's see what the last one I picked was. Oh, it was the, it was the trusses. And they've got all these different, where's my truss, where is it at? That's scissor truss, scissor truss. It's kind of hard to see, honestly. Here we go, I had truss, queen trusses. And there's all kinds of parameters you can set. You know, if you want, if I wanted to go in here and fix all these rafters, but it's time consuming. Uh, but anyway, once you get your parameters set, you just say make roof and voila. <clears throat> now, and then what I did was I just went in here and took out that gable wall and then the ceiling. And I had myself a... Now, for a smaller roof, those that's, you know, okay. The size of those webs were you know like something like six inches which is not a real size this is the other thing you know this was an architect that came up with this and none of the thing like there's no there's no timber that's five by six <laughs> it, it would be like three and a half by five and a half or whatever even if it was a rough sawn it would be a different dimension than that so it's kind of cool to say hey do you want this kind of roof or do you want that kind of roof and then when he says yes or no you delete it <laughs> And then you go over here and do what you know is real. See, I know, I know this is real. Or however they decide it is, they want to build it. I know what is real. You know, the timber that I can buy. 
so anyway uh, now uh, the other thing I never did was detail it was this um, this little connector is just a hole let's see I need to put this I need to put I know what I need to do now is I need to get my groups working back together so I need to put these two sides of a roof in together I make them a group then I'll make I'll make a bigger group I'll nest those in the truss group let's see I need to make a truss group so I'm going to uh oh I'm on the air people can't answer the phone sorry leave me a message <laughs> I'm trying to get to where I can see all of the let's see if I can get brave here and just let's see I know there's seven trusses so if I select uh, one two three four five that means I gotta select the last two. Oh, I can see their tails right here six seven I'm gonna make the trusses a group and then I'm gonna select um, you don't want to get too far into this so I think what I'm gonna do is select that and the trusses and then I'm gonna cut them and then I'm gonna select my carport group and I'm gonna repaste in place so now everything's in the same group you know I can go in here I can select the trusses or the decking or the posts you see the beam the beam itself you want to keep all that stuff together and that is because that whole group is in a layer called carport which I thought carport roof too what I need to do is I'm gonna have a, a layer just called carport see this is how you manage your layers uh, I think carport roof too yeah I can delete that and I'm gonna put this in carport now that we're pretty sure what we're gonna do let's see I don't draw lines in you draw all your lines in layer zero and then you create groups and put those groups in layers you don't put because here's what happens and I've got some drawings that are just nasty where I've got like a layer like I'll draw a box here you know and like some of the lines accidentally get in a layer right uh, so let's say that's uh, in ceiling let's put that in a, a layer which it's not supposed to be in so now and then I do a group I make a group and I'll put that group in layer uh, carport well now if I turn off I already got myself confused <laughs> you see if I turn off one layer that works but if I what was the other one anyway trust me just don't do that just draw all your lines in layer zero <clears throat> sometimes you'll turn off a layer and you'll have lines uh, if I had remembered what layer I put it in um, you'll have lines hanging out there by themselves and then when you try to select them anyway trust me uh, I'm getting I'm getting sidetracked here and I need to get some of this work done so uh, the point I'm trying to make is here is that um, this this little thing right here thankfully I put it in a group by itself it was just a schematic hole to get past the to to get past the, the idea the concept of it now I gotta actually deep I gotta draw little trusses now should I use that as a I could use it as a guide though couldn't I I want I need to decide how What I could do is shrink shrink down myself. I 
could just shrink. Yeah, I think what I'll do is I'll shrink down a... I'll decide how much of an offset here I want. You know, here, like, I'll see what it is just for the fun of it. Two foot six and three eighths. Well, I'll just make it two foot six. Or I need to raise it up because this is low. This part is low. So I think what I'm going to do is just get rid of that and then come in here. And uh, I think what I'm going to do is move this roof decking out of the way for a minute. And what I can do there, you see all I had to do is grab the whole thing. I didn't have to do much of else, anything else. I'm just going to move this out, get myself on an axis here. Up there, I'm going to move that out like 40 feet or something. And then I'll move it back and get it out of the way for now. Uh, I'm not going to put in a layer and all that and turn it off. I just, sometimes it's easier just to move stuff. But what I'm going to do is make myself a truss that's basically a smaller version of this. So I'm going to copy this. Then I'm going to get out of that group and I'm going to paste it. I need to. That axis, you see how my axis is funny? I got something going on here, so I'm just going to paste it in place. And then I'm going to move it over. I'm just going to put it out beside it. That's weird. I got the axis on this thing. If I turn on the axis, you'll see what I'm talking about. Yeah, and what it is, is he's got this. Uh, I've got this house turned based on the way it sits on his site. You can see this, how the site slopes. So the axis is all screwed up. Well, but the garage is not. The garage, I mean, the carport's on that act, the red axis. That's weird, anyway. Another, another anomaly, another gremlin in my drawing. I don't need, I don't like viewing the axis while I'm working. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this as a unique truss, make unique, and try to figure out right quick the easiest way. To do. I just realized that these trusses don't have a the ridge cut. But see, I can just fix that on one of them. Now see, here's your first example of why you want things to be components. I fixed that one, and all of them were fixed. That that'll liter literally be a line there, you know, where the two rafters meet. But back to this one, and since I made this one unique, uh, it's it's not changed so I think what I'm going to do is offset this two feet and what I may do is just draw in oh, I'm not editing it yet am I? I have to double click on it what I may do is just draw myself in another, a new need to get this I need to be in in the group well I want to bring this over a little bit because I don't something's acting funny so I can see I don't like it being against that I 
what I could do is just copy this did I make that that's bizarre I didn't think I made that how did I select that that's bizarre 